Dram Torah Bhagavatam Ki Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janma diasayatam vayaritas tarata takya sorry Janma diasayatam vayaritas tarata chate swabhigya sora Tene brahma uldaya adikavahimu jantiza suraya Tejo varim prida jata vinimajo jatra trisagumrasya Dhamna svena sada nirasta kuhakam satyam param de mahi O my Lord Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva O all-pervading personality of Godhead I offer my respectful obeisance unto you I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes, of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious. Right, okay. And he is independent because there's no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore merit upon him, Lord Shri Krishna, who is eternally existent in a transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I merit upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Paramoni Matanam Satam. Paramoni Masanam Satam. Vidyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Vidyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Shivadam Tapa Chayamana. Shivadam Tapu Chayamana. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamani Pite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamani Pite. Kim Vapare Ishvara. Kim Vapare Ishvara. Sadhurhiti Avrudya Tetra. Sadhurudya Avrudya Tetra. He behaves to suit to this section. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially this motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truths have roots in threefold missions. Such truths have roots in threefold missions. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in this material. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. 
by this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within the soul. Oh, expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. Oh, expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although this nectarian juice is already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hidiyam Takstula Bhadrani Vidu Nuti Srihitsatam to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in the everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies a devotee who constantly engages in the hearing of him. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. Tran dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo kama lo badayas chaye chete tare navidam titvam satve prasiddhati By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manasu Bhagavat bhakti yogataha Bhagavat tattva vidyanam Mukta sangha shijayate When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hirdaya grantis Sidyante sarvasam saya Shiyante chasyakarmani Justa evat manishwari Thus the hard knot of material affection uh, uh, thus the hard knot, I'm sorry, thus bhakti yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come to the stage of a samsayam samagram, understanding the supreme personality of Godhead, uh, understanding the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Shimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 14, Text 39. Kaschite namayam tata Prastate jas vibhasime Alabda manu vajatam ta Vajata Kimvatata Chirosita Chirosita 
Translation, my brother Arjuna, please tell me whether your health is all right. You appear to have lost your bodily luster. Is this due to others disrespecting and neglecting you because of your long stay in Dwarka? Hmm. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. From all angles of vision, Mar the Maharaja inquired from Arjuna about the welfare of Dwarka. But he concluded at last that as long as Lord Sri Krishna himself was there, nothing inauspicious could happen. But at the same time, Arjuna appeared to be bereft of his bodily luster, and thus the king inquired of his personal welfare and asked so many vital questions. So again, this is Understanding what's happened by reading the physical, uh, let's say, characteristics of a person. So you can read, you can understand what's happened by physical characteristics of the body and also by n natural phenomena in nature. Text 40. Kachin. Nabi Hato Babai Sabdadi Bir Amangalai Nadatum Uktam Artibya Asaya Yat Patishrutam Translation has someone addressed you with unfriendly words or threatened you? Could you not give charity to one who asked? Or could you not keep your promise to someone? These are all causes of anxiety. Purport. A chatriya or a rich man is sometimes visited by persons who are in need of money. When they are asked for a donation, it is the duty of the possessor of wealth to give in charity in consideration of the person, place, and time. If a chetri or rich man fails to comply with this obligation, he must be very sorry for his discrepancy. Similarly, one should not fail to keep his promise to give in charity. Hmm. These discrepancies are sometimes causes of despondency and thus failing a person becomes subjected to criticism, which might also be the cause of Arjuna's plight. Notice the word may. Text 41. Kaschit, kaschit tvam pramanam balam gam vridam roginam striyam Sarano prasritam satvam Nadyakshi saranam prada You are always protector of the deserving living beings, such as brahmanas, children, cows, women, and the diseased. Could you not give them protection when they approached you for shelter? Again, uh, all reasons why someone might be in, uh, why Arjuna may be in anxiety. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The Brahmanas are always engaged in researching knowledge for the society's welfare work, both materially and spiritually. Deserve the protection of the king in all respects. Similarly, the children of the state, the cow, the diseased person, the woman and the old man specifically require protection of the state or a Chatriya king. If such living beings do not get protection by the Chatriya or the royal order or by the state, it is certainly shameful for the Chatriya or the state. If such things had actually happened to Arjuna, Maharaj was anxious to know about these discrepancies. Well, this was true 
5,000 years ago. It's still true today. You see, there are so many different programs that the government of the United States has. There's Medicare, Medicaid. There are uh, rental uh, support, food stamps, so many things that the state provides or the uh, the the federal government provides and states provide for the welfare of the citizens, the children, the cows, diseased persons or old, older persons, women, and, uh, and so forth. Of course, nowadays, the state doesn't provide any protection for the cows, nor does it really have a lot of say, protections for brahmanas. It has some, but not much. So because of that, uh, there's very inauspicious, many inauspicious things are happening. And this is explained also in the 14th chapter, Bhagavad Gita, where it says in the purport to one verse, Namo Brahmanya Devaya Go Brahmanahitaya Jagatitaya Krishnaya Govindaya Namo Namaha my Lord, you are the well-wisher of the cows and the brahmanas, and you are the well-wisher of the entire human society and world. It's in Vishnu Purana 1.19.65. Prabhupada writes, The purport is that special mention is given in that prayer, in this prayer, for the protection of the cows and the brahmanas. Brahmanas are the symbol of spiritual education, and cows are the symbol of the most valuable food, meaning milk. These two living creatures, the brahmanas and the cows, must be given all protection. That is real advancement of civilization. In modern human society, spiritual knowledge is neglected and cow killing is encouraged. It is to be understood then that human society is advancing in the wrong direction and is clearing the path to its own condemnation. A civilization which guides the citizens to become animals in their next lives is certainly not a human civilization. The present human civilization is, of course, grossly misled by the modes of passion and ignorance. It is a very dangerous age, and all nations should take care to provide the easiest process, Krishna consciousness, to save humanity from the greatest danger. That's a wonderful statement by Srila Prabhupada. And obviously... It's true. The cows are being killed, and spiritual knowledge is neglected. In fact, if you send your child to a public school, public schools openly, unabashedly, uh, without any hesitation, clearly deny any spiritual education in the school. There it is. So what do you expect of the society? How come there's so much Varna Shankara today in America? Children who have grown up without proper education and therefore become a nuisance and a danger to society, to civilized society. And therefore, it is to be understood then that human society is advancing in the wrong direction and is clearing a path to its own condemnation. A civilization which guides the citizens to become animals in their next lives is certainly not a human civilization. The present human civilization is, of course, grossly misled by the modes of passion and ignorance. It is a very dangerous age and all nations should take care to provide the easiest process, Krishna consciousness, to save humanity from the greatest danger. What is the greatest danger for a human being? Once having the human form of life, to receive the body of an animal or less in the next life. <laughs> if you knew, if someone knows that in the next life they're going to be a germ or a rat, or a worm in the stool. I don't think they would like that. And that's that's why it says that 
this is the uh, that Krishna consciousness can save a person from such danger or catastrophic result. This is also explained in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, verse number 40, where it says, Nahabhikramanastosti patijaya no vidyate swapam apyasya dharmasya twayate ahato bhavayat. In this endeavor, there's no loss or diminution, and a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous type of fear. So, what is Prabhupada saying to purport? <clears throat> Material activities and the results end with the body, but work in Krishna consciousness carries a person again to Krishna consciousness, even after the loss of the body. At least one is sure to have a chance in the next life of being born again as a human being either in the family of great cultured brahmanas or in a rich aristocratic family. That will give one a further chance for elevation. That is the unique quality of work done in Krishna consciousness. So you're never a loser in Krishna consciousness. However, <coughs> uh, the greatest type, when it says, protect one from the most dangerous type of fear, Well, that means you take birth as an animal or, or lower in the next life. And uh, that would be catastrophic for people who have had the human body in this life. Okay, so we read. Text 42. Kachit tvam nagamogam yam. Gam yam basat kritam striyam Parajito vata bhavan Nutamair nasamai pati Have you contacted a woman of impeachable character? Or have you not properly treated a deserving woman? Or have you been defeated on the way by someone who is inferior or equal to you? Purport by His Divine Grace, Sri Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. It appears from this verse that during the time of the Pandavas, free contact between man and woman was allowed in certain conditions only. The higher caste men namely the brahmanas and chachas, could accept a woman of the Vaishya or Sudra community, but a man from the lower caste could not contact a woman of a higher caste. Even a chatriya could not contact a woman of the brahmana caste. The wife of a brahmana is considered one of the seven mothers, namely one's own mother, the wife of the spiritual master, the wife of the teacher, the wife of a brahmana, and the wife of a king, the cow, the nurse, and the earth. <clears throat> Such contact between man and woman was known as uttama and adama. Above ignorance or uh, low class. Contact of a brahmana with a chatriya woman is uttama, but the contact of a chatriya with a brahmana woman is adama. Therefore, condemned, and therefore condemned, a woman approaching a man for contact should never be refused. But at the same time, the discretion, as above mentioned, may also be considered. Bhima was approached by Hindimbi from a community lower than the Sudras, and Yayati refused to marry the daughter of Sukracharya because of Sukracharya's being a Brahmana. Yasteva, a Brahmana, was called to beget Pandu and Dhritarashtra. Satyavati belonged to a family of fishermen. But Parasara, a great Brahmana, begot in her Vyasadeva. So there are so many examples of contacts with women, but in all cases, the contacts were not abominable, nor were the results of such contacts bad. 
Contact between men and women is natural, but that also must be carried out under the regulative principles so that social consecration may not be disturbed or unwanted worthless population be increased for the unrest of the world. So that's the key, unwanted worthless population being increased. It is abominable for a chacha to be defeated by one who is inferior in strength or equal in strength. If one is defeated at all, he should be defeated by some superior power. Arjuna was defeated by Bhisma Deva, and Lord Krishna saved him from the danger. This was not an insult for Arjuna because Bhisma Deva was far superior to Arjuna always, namely age, respect, and strength. But Krishna was equal, but I'm sorry, but Karna was equal to Arjuna. And therefore, Arjuna was in crisis when fighting with Karna. It was felt by Arjuna. And therefore, Krishna, uh, I'm sorry, therefore, Karna was killed even by crooked means. Such are the engagements of the Chatriyas. And Maharaj Yudhisthira inquired from his brother whether anything undesirable happened on the way home from Dwarka. So here we see. There are many rules and regulations of relationship between kshatriyas, relationship between men and women, and uh, between saints and women, and so forth. So it, uh, it requires uh, one to be very diligent not to violate any of these any of these rules. Now, of course, if one is not aware of the rules, then they violate them not unknowingly, but they still have the consequences. Ignorance is no excuse. So the best thing is to get educated, and real education is Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. If we don't give our children this education, we are responsible as Krishna conscious parents and, and leaders. We are responsible for misleading the children by f forcing them to go to demoniac schools. <coughs> it's better they don't even go to school. They'd rather get, they get training uh, through apprenticeship, which was the traditional way uh, training through apprenticeship. Either you become the apprentice uh, or a student of a brahmana or a tradesman or a family member and you get trained how to earn money honestly and also in, in association with brahmanas or genuine brahmanas or vaishnavas how to understand what is the real purpose of life. So um, without that type of spiritual education and practical material education, people develop very bad habits, even though they may be so-called smart. <coughs> uh, there are so many very smart people in this world who are rogues and rascals and engaged in all kinds of sinful activity. and. Uh, even though they have PhDs and they have uh, great uh, accomplishments, so-called Nobel Prizes and so, f so forth. Okay, so are there any questions? We, re we read a lot of verses. And you see how uh, very diligently Maharaj Yudhisthira is questioning Arjuna to find out what, if there's something wrong and in, in that questioning, you see the whole culture of Krishna consciousness. Uh, you mentioned that Karna was equal to Arjuna. Yeah, he was superior. He was su Okay, but still, as, as the older brother, exactly. he was superior in some ways. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, because you said equal. So 
Yeah. It's hard to do it because you would even go older than you'd be too. Mm -hmm. You're not born. Yes. So I wonder why both of you are equally different. According to the ability to fight or Well, yeah. He uh well, don't forget when Karna came to this Swayambara ceremony in Draupadi, uh, the uh, the, uh, the Vaishnava the Pandavas cleverly disqualified him <laughs> because he was probably able to do the same thing as Arjuna, which is uh, without looking, uh, shoot the what was it, a fish or something fish. in the eye. While the bottle fish was moving like that, it's very um, it's almost impossible to do such a thing. But Karna was able to do it, and they 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 disqualified him. They asked him who his mother and father were, or who his father, or what family he was born in, and, and it appeared as if he was born in a family of a of a chariot driver. So they sort of laughed at him, but. Duryodhana immediately recognized Karna's qualities and uh, took him under his, uh, let's say, uh, protection and gave him, uh, you know, a lot of honor. So now you might think, oh, well that, that just shows there's something wrong with the Pandavas. Not really, but uh, it's one of those things. It's like a Greek tragedy story. Karna had no way of knowing who was his real mother. And, uh, but that didn't stop him from being an extraordinary person because his father is Surya. And uh, he had different markings in his body to, uh, to indicate that he was an exceptional person. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Karna was equal to Arjuna. Definitely in fighting, he was equal to him. It was but felt by, yeah. Even then, even then, I mean, Arjuna was really, because of Krishna, the battle was far, far stronger. Because you can remember when, uh, one time I could have, Well, Arjuna did defeat the Kauravas when he was uh, incognito, oh, yeah. near the end of being incognito in, in King Bharata's kingdom. Yeah. yeah, so he did defeat them by himself. Yeah. But, uh, you know, in a direct fight, Karna and Arjuna... Uh, because Arjuna was having difficulty killing him, Krishna, uh, you know, gave pro Arjuna uh, permission to kill him while he was off his chariot with his back turned to them, which is completely a no-no in uh, Chaitra fighting. Okay. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.